<laughs> are y'all ready? I don't know if you guys are ready. Saturday is about to be unbelievable at Buffalo Wild Wings. Appreciate you guys. Welcome to the Scoop World Order. We got it all set up. We got some monsters showing up for uh, Saturday morning. It's going to be awesome. Get there early. It's the one thing I will plead with you people. If you guys are coming, man, get there early. I'll be there right at the crack of dawn, uh, ready to set up. Uh, it's going to be a monster day. It's going to be awesome. Buckeye Scoop in the house at Buffalo Wild Wings, corner of Lane and Height, 9 a.m., uh, and why here's the thing. And again, I'm not being a hater, but why go to the spring game when you can watch the spring game on all the big screen TVs and watch the masters at the same time, moving day, Saturday, uh, it's going to be fantastic. So appreciate you guys. Uh, what's going on at Michigan? Tony offer took a nice giant shot at Ryan day today. Uh, big time transfer portal buzz. Uh, it's like he Keno's heading to Iowa is Dallin Hayden heading to Ole Miss. A lot of smoke on both of those rumors. Um, Julian saying is a monster Ryan day. Uh, uh, he didn't extinguish the fire. He actually threw, uh, nitrous oxide on top of the fire, uh, where he said, Oh, he's going to be ready to play against Oregon and Akron and Michigan or whatever else he said. But it's like, so it's, uh, it's going to be a very interesting spring game. Who is going to stand out? We're going to break all of that down as always. We appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for kicking with us again. Uh, the growth, the uh, all of the greatness that comes with the show is because of you guys. This is a huge show because you guys made it one, so thank you. It's always a pleasure to be here and work with y'all. Uh, if you guys have Super Chats, get those fired up. Again, we appreciate all you guys do uh, for the show and for our troops. Again, our Super Chats go right into Pay It Forward. Pay It Forward is a program where we've signed up hundreds of people onto BuckeyeScoop.com for free memberships. Um, thank you of our service members armed forces, firefighters, first responders. It's been incredible. I've met so many amazing people through this program. Uh, again, my forensic uh, analysis uh, crime scene cop who I've talked to multiple times. You're awesome. Thank you, sweetheart. You're a great girl. Uh, but again, I, just, I love signing these people up because it's so fun to take care of people that take care of us each and every day. So thank you for all of that uh, as always. So again, shout out who you guys are are watching with and shout out where you guys are watching from uh, and shut up who you bring it to uh, the Buckeye scoop um, spring game at tailgate 9 a.m. to 1130 corner of lane and high street. It's about to be insane. Uh, people are flying in from all over the country. People are spending the night. It's going to be absolutely awesome. I can't wait to see all of you guys. Um, uh, so shout out who you guys are bringing as always. Uh, Nevada, uh, a lot to digest. Um, we had the Tony Alford thing where he took a big shot at Ryan Day today. Uh, we've got the rumors on Lincoln Keenholz going to Iowa. Dallin Hayden going to Ole Miss. Uh, Julian Sane allegedly has to get ready to play week one. There's a ton of smoke around the program. Uh, and our, our meetup is going to be fantastic. I'm over the top excited about it. Uh, but what say you? What is uh, the topic that you'd like to start with on this uh, wonderful Wednesday night? Let's talk Tony Alford to start. It. Tony Alford's always one of my favorites. And Tony, you know, we we were surprised the other day. We wake up and Tony unsolicited sent us a, a note into our DMs on our Twitter account, which is always super awesome. That we know some guy making uh, eight hundred grand a year to coach running backs at Michigan is is thinking about Buckeye Scoop Twitter, which always pleases us. But um, Tony decided to come out and make a, a comment with some not too not too veiled uh jabs at ryan day and i i don't know if you have it on the uh on the board or can kind of put it up because i i don't, I don't remember exactly what was said but um it was something about how michigan's tough and michigan has staff alignments and especially on the offensive side of the football and the you know, the clear implication is that obviously that ohio state doesn't have staff alignment and ohio state doesn't have staff alignment on the offensive side of the football and ryan was the offensive side of the football last year so uh and tony being a huge part of it i mean i mean who else is on the line you've got you know brian hartline tony alford justin fry and ryan day so like if you're not not in alignment man you're 25 percent of the problem but uh tony chirping the, the, i love the i'm telling you the myth of michigan toughness thing it's not you're not winning because you're tough. You you won because you cheated, and you won because you had forty five like fifth year and sixth year guys 
on your team that took advantage of the COVID year. And uh, you had a good team. You had a good quarterback, and you, you won some football games. But this thing about Michigan being tougher, we're going to see how tough they are this year because I, I think the whole, all the entire narrative is going to come crumbling down about how tough Michigan is, how tough their program is, how aligned they're. None of that's going to matter uh, in, in Columbus this year because they're going to get boat raced. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just love running all these comments back about alignment and toughness because – we're gonna we're gonna find out who's more talented and uh, and who's gonna put up more points on the scoreboard and that and that's that's definitely gonna be Ohio State so I'm excited about that but but Tony Alford is the gift that keeps on giving the the differences between him and Coach Lock couldn't have been more apparent uh, Coach Lock gave an interview today which was just amazing one of one of his great comments was talking about how you know he's not in a, like an he's not an elite uh, recruiter. He's an, an elite developer of lifelong relationships or something. I mean, whatever he said something that was really, uh, just really heartfelt and really spot on. And I'm just so glad we got that guy. And I'm so glad we got rid of Alford and uh, Alford's comments that I just confirmed for me, not that I needed any more confirmation, but it confirmed me for one more time why that guy was, uh, was a wasted space on our, our coaching staff and uh, was glad to see him gone. So the BuckeyeScoop.com message board, uh, Wu-Tang, appreciate you, brother. Thank you for posting this. Uh, he posted the comment that is getting a lot of uh, smoke tonight. Um, Tony Alford said there's a level of toughness here that's been established, and that's firm. The alignment of the staff, what Sharon has done as far as staff alignment, continuity, and togetherness has trickled down to the players. That's the one thing that stood out, a.k.a. That didn't exist at Ohio State. It was uh, the alignment of the staff, in particular the offensive staff. I mean, uh, again, like if that's not a shot at Ryan Day, um, I don't know what is. I mean, that that's a, that's an assault on Ryan Day. And if I'm Ryan and I'm reading that and he's like saying, you know, he's talking about the alignment of the staff, in particular the offensive staff. Like Ryan ran the offensive staff last year. Like Tony, you know, he was here for a cup of coffee with Chip Kelly. Um, but you know he's not you know in in long or in uh in, in the biggest parts about you know this is about Ryan you know because Ryan ran the offensive side of the ball Ryan was the offensive coordinator Brad Hartline was the fake offensive coordinator last year he was the guy that didn't call the plays so he's the fake offensive coordinator and Ryan um was in that room he ran that room and so you know when when Tony says you know it's about the alignment of the staff I'm like well you know Ryan had. Justin Fry, who's aligned with him. Brian Hartline doesn't have a choice because he can't go anywhere. Uh, so he's aligned with Ryan. Uh, Tony was there, who's obviously Benedict Arnold and a scumbag. He's aligned with him. Keenan Bailey is Ryan's, you know, um, coffee boy, uh, butt buddy. So, you know, he's aligned with him. So, I mean, I don't know who's out of alignment in Ryan's offensive staff room last year. Uh, when you have a bunch of guys that, frankly, are completely aligned with Ryan. So I guess it was just him. Uh, and again, I think that that's, uh, the other thing is like, you know, when he talks about alignment staff with Sharon, it's like, he's got an, an all new line, an all new offensive stuff. He's got a new line coach, new tight ends coach. Um, you know, I don't know if his, I think his receivers coach, moved. I mean, he lost Mike Hart. You know, I mean, he's got an all new staff in totalitarity. So it's like, I don't know what, the, what he's talking about in terms of staff alignment and continuity and togetherness. Cause like. It's all new right now. This is a honeymoon phase. This is, uh, you know, you, you you take your 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 pretty girl on the first date. Everything's great and rosy and wonderful, and nobody farts in front of each other or whatever. But now, like, you get into like the real stuff, and you know, when these guys lose the game, which is going to happen when they play Texas, and Curtis you know, Quinn Ewers smacks them across the mouth and throws for six touchdowns on these guys. Like, I'm just saying, like, we'll see how aligned they are and how cute they are and. How much they like to, you know, be big spoon, little spoon in the Michigan uh, uh, staff office, you know, in the little uh, coffee room or whatever, um, when they lose some games. Because again, they're that's going to come. These guys are coming off a 15 and 0 season that they didn't do. Again, Sharon Moore was born on third base. He's worse. He's worse than Ryan Day could ever dream of being because Sharon Moore is a he's a coffee he's a coffee boy right now. And Jim Harbaugh carried him to being a national champion. And again, he's he's the guy at the beginning of the Batman movie when Bane cuts the plane in half and says, brother, we need to see one guy in the wreckage. 
and like Bane and all the other Goombas all jump out and leave with that professor and they leave one guy in there to die. That's what Sharon Morris. He's the guy that Bane says, brother, we need to see one of the records. You got to go die. So Michigan gave him a big fat contract. Ward Manuel, who's going to get capped in the back of his head because he's worthless, is going to be gone. And 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 this is where they're at. So, of course, Tony Alford can say, oh, the alignment of the staff, what Sharon has done from staff alignment, continuity, and together this has trickled down to the players. Yeah, because they haven't lost a game yet. You know, they haven't had any adversity yet. They're riding high on a 15-0 season that none of those guys had anything to do with. Like, Sharon Moore, obviously, you know, was uh, the interim head coach, obviously line coach, did a great job coaching the line, but he's got to run the whole deal now. And again, we'll see, because all of a sudden, they don't have uh, 50, you know, six-year guys and fifth-year guys on their roster. They've got a young roster. They've got five new linemen, new quarterback, new everything. So we'll see how how tight they are uh, after Texas uh, takes them to the woodshed, because... Tony you, Quinn Ewers come for these boys, and he's got to put a big old. I mean, I'm not saying Quinn Ewers a pair of gold pants, and I can't wait to do it. Um, Nevada, uh, do you have any rebuttals to how I feel about Tony Alford? Because Tony, again, Tony's soft. Tony was a liability in recruiting. He lost to Mark Fletcher, and I, I talked to a great source today, and he said, "I don't think it was all nil. I think that was a cover up by uh, people." And they said, you know, Mark Fletcher was in, but. Tony was a lazy recruiter. I mean, I, I got that from a great source today. Big time, big time Ohio State guy. Uh, but your thoughts on that, Nevada? Well, uh, again, you just look at his action. I mean, you know, first of all, this comment, you know, it, the, the comment is so gratuitous today and it's just so unnecessary. And to take a shot at Ryan Day like that, I mean, I, I, but again, we knew it when he started jumping into our DMs then we, we know this guy is a complete and total clown. But Michigan's going to get – they're going to get a dose of that really quick. And, yeah, it's great right now. They're 0-0 zero and zero on the 2024 season. They haven't lost yet. Sharon's the smartest guy, and everybody's aligned. We'll, we'll see it. We'll see how aligned they are after Ewers roast them and after they lose a few games. Um, it's it's going to be, like I said, it, the only – everything would have to be a lie for them to be successful this year. And I don't believe, I think college football is very predictable. I think it follows a pattern. I think recruiting matters. I think coaching matters. I think players matter. And um, I think they're going to get a big dose of it this year, but I just thought the comments were just so, so silly. Um, you know, Tony Alford, he's already torched the, uh, the relationship. He's already, you know, torched any credibility that he has. And then he goes out there and does it again. But, He's truly becoming a, a, a true Michigan man when he makes classless comments like that. And, you know, it's, uh, it just, it's just going to make it that much sweeter this year when we, uh, when we run him in November. And the funny thing is like, you know, for Ryan, this is a, again, Ryan, Ryan is a young coach. He's learning as he goes, but this is, you know, when you've got that hankering to give someone the bullet, just do it. Don't, don't keep him on a one-year deal. Don't keep him uh expiring contract. Cause this is what you get. You get a guy that you're, hey, I'll keep you in front of the year. Well, and then when they put the uh, the screws to him, they said, well, we'll give you a second year. Uh, and he's like demanding a third year. I'm like, well, he doesn't deserve a third year because he's he's the worst he's the worst running backs coach I've ever seen at Ohio State. Tim Spencer, Doc Trussell, even Doc Trussell, who a lot of people it was nepotism higher with trust. He ran circle around Tony Alford. Like, come on, he brought in Beanie Pittman, uh, and and he actually played those guys. He didn't put. Um, you know, Mo Wells in, in instead of Beanie Beanie Wells. You know, I mean, I mean, Doc was playing the best players, and Tony didn't do that, and it was an absolute atrocity what he did to these kids the last couple of years. Um, but I think it's gonna be interesting. Like I said, I just I love the fact that we moved on. I think Carlos Lachlan's gonna be a huge upgrade, uh, and it's gonna be great for the entire program. Uh, Nevada, a lot of smoke in the portal right now. Couple big names, obviously. You know. Ryan did nothing to extinguish uh, the Julian Sands stuff that we've talked about for a month. And again, go check the timestamps. We had it first. Julian Sand being a superstar, being a computer, being um, maybe the smartest quarterback Ryan's ever seen, been around. And this is from Meteor's pre spring practice. We had nuggets on that on BuckeyeScoop.com. If you guys aren't members of BuckeyeScoop.com and you want the real, Join up because we bring it before everybody else does and everybody else uh, subscribes to our site so they can figure out what's going on inside the Woody Hayes. But uh, Linky Keenholz, a lot of smoke to Iowa. Dallin Hayden, 
major, major smoke to Ole Miss. Uh, again, Ole Miss, uh, Lane Kiffin was salty that we took Quinchon Judkins. Uh, so he tried to hire Corey Dennis. Corey obviously left and went to Tulsa for a full-time gig. And then Dallin Hayden looks like there's a good shot. He's getting up at Ole Miss. Um, I was told from a source today it's a done deal. So uh, your thoughts on that, Nevada? Um, and how do we continue to be as proficient as we can be in the portal? Yeah, I hadn't heard about the Ole Miss thing. A helping technician had posted something on uh, – I had heard about Keenels to Iowa. That kind of been out there. But I hadn't heard anything about um, Ole Miss until HT had posted that on our board. And so that was a little bit of a surprise. I mean, not surprising that he's leaving. Uh, but Ole Miss, you know, that's that's an interesting location for him. It's kind of like we traded running backs. We'll have traded Quinchon Judkins, first team all SEC running back uh, for Dallin Hayden and his 110 yards from last year, which, is, again, that's not meant I'm not dipping on Dallin. Dallin's a great kid. But – um, you know, I, as I post on the board, today, we'll be we'll be able to survive without him, and um, I think it's a good spot for him. I, I hope he goes down there and kills it. I, you know, I, I have to admit that I like Lane Kiffin. I've always liked Lane Kiffin. I find him to be a completely lovable rogue. He's a great guy to hang out with. He's a lot of fun. So I I, I root for Lane. I do, and that may put me in the minority, but that's okay because. Uh, Lane is, is a really, really fun guy to hang out with. And um, I, if, if indeed those, those rumors are true and Dallin ends up down there, I, I'm sure he'll have a great time. The scenery is beautiful down there. And uh, and the football's first rate as well. So I, I think that's a good spot for him. The scenery is beautiful. That is a great line. I love that. Uh, let's get to the Super Chats. St. Pete Buck, thank you for the 50. Appreciate you, brother. Coming from St. Petersburg in my scoop gear just for the event at B-Dubs. Appreciate you, bro. I mean, we'll come see you, dude. We can go down to, uh, ooh, what's down there? It's uh, Space Odyssey, like 10,000, and then also Mons Venus are down near St. Pete. So uh, we have a lot of friends in Florida. I grew up in Naples, so I'm a big Florida guy. So looking forward to seeing you. Again, if you guys are coming to the Buffalo Wild Wings event on Saturday, I plead with you. With tears in my eyes, please get there early. Please, because I'm telling you, this thing is about to be insane. So uh, it's going to be awesome. I can't wait. We've got a lot of uh, surprise stars that are going to be there. It's going to be it's going to be one of the best days in scoop history, but probably the best day in scoop history. Um, there's only one day in my mind that can top it uh, when we got a little bit less fat. But other than that, this is going to be the best day in uh, scoop history, and I'm really excited about it. Kevin Newby, thank you for the five in the spirit of the, of massive. Can we get another shirt in the merch line that says "Fix the C Nevada Buck logo"? Love the show. B Dubs be lit on Saturday. I don't know Nevada. Do we want to fix the C, or do you like the charm of the C being a little screwed up? See this logo again. I will put all the light. This has the C corrected. But I don't know if we like the charm of the C being a little bit screwed up on your regular logo. What are your thoughts on that, Nevada? Yeah, I, I mean, look, I like it both ways. I'm kind of flexible. I, I'm a man of the people. And so, you know, that's I'm a blue collar kind of guy. And that's why I don't mind having my C being a little uh, being a little crooked like that, a little incomplete. But that uh, that cup is fire and that is that is complete, too. So I kind of go both ways. But um to the point about B-dubs be lit on Saturday, it it definitely be lit. Now you got to send the format's going to be there's there's going to be a table where Burke Carton is going to be set up and he's going to be there. So make sure you're circulating. About, now, now Burke's going to try to circulate around and meet people, but it's going to be hard. So I, I I'm suggesting strongly we bring the people to the table. If you're there, if you got the gear, try to get a beer out of Barton. Come by the table, say hello. Um, look for the big cuddly bear there at the at the uh, at the head table, and uh, but get there early because you don't want to get there late, not have a place to sit or stand or get up to the bar, yeah. and then you're and then you're like, oh man, I, I didn't get a chance to do it. So if you get there early, um, it's best. Then yeah, I, I, if you know me, you, you and I have hung out enough to know this. If I got there. I probably would not go to the game. I, I would definitely be sitting down. I'd be watching them. What? I would why, why, why would you ever go to the game? The Masters is going to be on. 
it's on Fox, you, you know, network, you know, the masters. And then I, I would stay all night and watch the UFC 300, but that's just me. Oh God. Um, I would, I, I would never leave B-dubs except for to go to the bathroom. And they, then they have good bathroom, good quality bathrooms there. Well, that's so. going to be in Nevada when he shows up. I can't wait to see him. He's going to be in Nevada Ready? walking in, ordering wings, vodka tonic. Give me about 25 of them. He's going to have the aviators on. He's going to say, woo. He's got blonde hair. So when you see him, you be ready for him. I'm telling you, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, shout out to my boy, John Mariotti. We talked to you a little bit today. Uh, we got a bunch of shout outs I got to do today because I've got people that have been blowing my phone up. They're excited. I have people coming in from all over the country. So I'm excited to see all you guys. Me and my wife are going to be there. Uh, she's pregnant and uh, she's doing good. She's a, she's a trooper. Um, but it's going to be amazing. I've got my family coming down. They're going to get ripped. Uh, the same people I was with for the Notre Dame game. So you guys were there for that post Notre Dame, man. They were those the same people that were feeding me them shots. It was bad. Uh, so I won't, I'm not going to be drinking there because I got to be the big friendly cuddly bear, not the big drunk cuddly bear. So but I'm excited to see you guys. Like, again, I'm genuinely excited to see you meet your families, meet your wives, kids, whoever you bring. You'll meet my old lady, uh, the scoop staff. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. Benji, thank you for the Scoop Ultra membership. Thank you for the 10. In hindsight, did they keep Tony on staff for too long? Yes. Uh, were there rumors uh, of him being jaded leading up to the stabbing his room in the back? Yes. Uh, I can't help but laugh a lot at how much worse he looks every day. Yeah, I mean, Ryan wanted to fire him in December. That was the the the, the biggest rumor in the universe. And, you know, it's hard to fire somebody that brings in Quinshawn. And then, you know, Trey decides to stay. So that kind of was like, you know, um, it's like putting tape on a dam. I guess you put like some scotch tape on a dam and okay, the dam is good now, but you know, eventually that's still going to bust and run out. So that's kind of where it's at. Uh, I think that uh, obviously Ryan has learned a, a lesson. He's learned a lesson with hiring people, firing people, moving on for people. Like you can't be agnostic you can't be oh well i love the family and the kids got one more year left at dublin jerome high school like you know if if someone's trash at what they do you just gotta bullet them and say okay move on you're fine if you gotta leave your family behind that's great uh you know go to go to where go to akron i mean because tony's not a michigan guy he's a more of an akron type guy at kent state uh maybe otterbein that's more his skill set than recruiting big time ball and have to actually work um, again, we looked at the rotations, trash. Uh, we looked at his uh, his resume, trash. Uh, he recruited J.K. Dobbins, the only running back that he recruited in the last, you know, ten years. Uh, so again, it, it was uh, it was very lackluster. Nevada, Benji asks, in hindsight, did we keep Tony Alford for too long? And uh, were there rumors on him being jaded, leading to him stabbing the uh, not just the line room, but the set, the offensive staff room in the back? And he says he can't help but laugh at how much worse it looks every day. Your thoughts on that? Well, we, we thought he was gone. I mean, he was the other coach when we talked about other coaches, you know, you know, being fired back in the summer. Because we, we obviously knew Parker was going. We knew Corey Dennis was going. Um, we had alluded to another coach. It was Tony. And, you know, I think, you know, as we've said many times, and I don't need to be the old guy that repeats himself, had he gone anywhere else, it wouldn't be an issue, but him going to Michigan and then now he's kind of throwing it down on Ryan day, throwing it down on the program, calling us soft. And I mean, it's, um, it's, I mean, it's just, it's beautiful as far as I'm concerned, because, you know, he'll have Michigan Buffalo for a couple of years and he'll do his mediocre act again, because mediocre is mediocre and he's going to be mediocre. Um, and I think this is probably the last vestiges of, of nice Ryan where Ryan did this. I think Ryan, uh, his postseason, you know, offseason 2024 moves have been absolutely uh, A plus upgrades. All every time. I think if he had to do it over again, he would just bite the bullet and, uh, and, and, and give Tony the bullet. But I think it was his last little thing of being nice. He wanted him to kind of move along. He was trying to kind of give him a chance to move along while he still had the Ohio State logo on his sweater. But, you know, then that's what you get for being a nice guy. He goes and, and kind of uh, sticks it in your ear by going to Michigan. So uh, hopefully lesson learned. Ryan's a young coach. He'll get better. Uh, he has gotten better. that been tremendously better. Uh, but this, this was probably his, his only misstep of the offseason. And then we turned it into an upgrade. So uh, that's just the way Ryan's rolling right now. 
Yep. It's the best thing ever. And I'm, I'm proud of Ryan. I'm happy for Ryan. Raymond Mitchell, thank you for the five. I say the meetup after party should be at Gasworks for old time's sake. Dollar bombs for everybody. Gasworks was a time back in 08, back when that was the spot between their brothers, Callahan's, Sugar Bar. That used to be the spot. Uh, now our spots, uh, because we have five food sponsorships right now. We have Panera Bread. We have Buffalo Wild Wings. We have Town Hall. We have Mandrake. And we just added Twin Peaks. So those are where we go and party. They're the best five spots in all of uh, Ohio. And again, they're all epic partners of BuckeyeScoop.com. So we're really excited about that. Twin Peaks is brand new. Um, so yeah, that's where we're going to be at. Uh, I miss Gasworks back in the day. When Natalie Cunningham was a shot girl there, it was fire um, back before they uh, got woke and uh, they weren't as good as they are now. Um, that whole area is like destitute and boring now. It used to be amazing, uh, but instead, same like the uh, the Columbus, the Pepsi Power Patrol girls used to be fire and now uh, they don't even show their midriffs anymore because that's the America that we live in. But back when it was real, uh, I mean, the girls were hotter. The blue jackets were better, um, but now they're uh, trash. And again, I I take that up with management. Again, that's a that's a decision that they made, and it all sucks now. Geo did it. Thank you for the ten. Appreciate you, my friend. To tell Tony stop eating the sour grapes. The sour grapes are probably dipped in ranch for Tony. Just being real. Uh, Ryan Day carried his bum. A dollar sign. Dollar sign for far too long. Uh, two with one more T. His comments are irrelevant as he is. Nobody cares what his opinions are about us. Yeah, but, you know, Tony's, he's taking pot shots. And Tony, he likes Twitter fingers. You know, Tony's like the guy, he's the battle rapper that we smack down without any effort. You know, we're we're the mountain. Tony is the the molehill. Tony's the sand flea. We're the mountain. It's all fine. Uh, which is why he, like, tweets at us and he sent us a DM, which, again, is hilarious. But, again, he's... He's not relevant anymore. He wasn't relevant before he got to Ohio State. Now that he left Ohio, it's not relevant anymore. And and again, he had the worst rotations I've ever seen. And, and Dallin Hayden, God bless Dallin Hayden and his parents and his virtuism and his uh, belief in faith or whatever, because I don't know how on earth he stayed here after Tony screwed him up as bad as he did the last three years, but he did. Uh, and thank God he's getting out of here so he can actually go play. Um, but yeah, that's my opinion. Uh, and your thoughts, uh, Geo did it says, tell Tony, stop eating the sour grapes. And Ryan Day carried him and his bum behind for far too long. And he believes his comments are as irrelevant as he is. Nobody cares what his opinions are about us. Oh, Nevada is no longer here. So he will be calling back in. Larry Daniels, thank you for the five. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> when did I lose you? Did you get my question? I did not get your question. All right, I, so Geo, Geo off, did it. So Geo I, did it. Back. Said I am back. Tell, tell Tony to stop eating the sour grapes. Ryan Day carried his bum behind for far too long. His comments are as relevant as he is. Nobody cares what his opinions are about us. Your thoughts. Yeah, well, I mean, look, Tony makes himself topical here on these Ohio State boards when he does this, and um, like I said, I just thought it was it was a beautiful contrast because Coach Locke was presented to the media today, uh, came out, made some great great comments about his you know you know uh, his rise, his meteoric rise from you know correctional officer to coach at Ohio State, and um, it just like I said, it just it just makes me prouder to be a Buckeye, it makes me prouder of Ryan Day. And sometimes, you know, to appreciate what you have, you have to look at, you know, where you've been and what you've, what, what you've been before. And uh, I, Tony just reminds me how lucky we are to have what we do and, and where we are. So thank, thank you, Tony, for that. I appreciate it. Totally agree. Larry Daniels, uh, the first. Thank you for being a scoop. I'll remember, thank you for the five. Coaches make the big box at Ohio State to be professional and in alignment. Day is too nice. A guy or able to bounce Tony for poor performance. I don't know. I mean, Urban hired Tony, so um, he could have. I mean, obviously, you know, Ryan was there. I think that 
Ryan wanted to fire him last year, but again, when you get traded, say for a senior year, and then you get Quinchon, you know, coming from the portal, it's, it's really hard to, to whack a guy when he's got the top two running backs in the country in his room. Uh, so again, you have to give, we have to be fair. Like Tony accomplished that, but you know, the rest of the, his, his body of work was trash. So I don't know, Nevada, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, again, Larry Daniels, who is a great scoop member. And again, thank you for the five coaches make the big bucks at Ohio state to be professional in alignment. He believes Ryan day is too nice. A guy or would have bounced Tony for poor performance. Do you believe that Nevada? Yeah. Um, I, I like to think that I'd like to think that urban would have done that, but you know, t- you know, Tony survived some time with, with urban as well. And, and um, like I said, t- Tony's one of those guys. There's always those guys that just do enough. And t- Tony's able to say enough of the right things and show enough of the right things and do just enough to kind of save his job. So maybe he'd have slipped by urban. I, I don't think he'd have, he'd have lasted eight years in urban. That's for sure. Just because he's such a bad recruiter. And I, I think the year when we didn't get a running back. That was probably, I, uh, probably you're back. The end of, that, would, that, would, that would have been the end of the story there. I don't think that Ryan, Ryan would have put up with uh, urban would have put up with not getting a running back in the class. Oh, absolutely. I totally agree. Uh, Clay Alders, appreciate you, my man. Thank you for the five. Do we ride with Peoples as running back three, or do we need to look at the portal for more depth or both? Who? Um, Nevada OH. N- Nevada OH. I O. So I believe uh, we ride with James Peoples as running back number three. I don't think red shirting big time running backs is. Uh, is um a thing anymore i don't think it's efficient anymore it's kind of like going for two uh going you know re- not red shirting f- players on football teams is kind of the new going for two instead of kicking the extra point i think that it's a lot more proficient to play these guys especially when they have four games they can play i think james peoples has to play this year i think that we've had too many injuries with travion and uh mayan and every other running back that's been ahead of our number three guy the last couple of years like you gotta you gotta play three running backs to win the Big Ten, if not four. I think James Peebles has to get ready to go. I think that's the way to roll. Um, Nevada, your thoughts? Do we ride with James Peebles as running back number three, or do we look to the portal for more depth, or both? And who? Uh, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that is a great question, and I think, uh, I mean, I I think slash no that Ohio State is looking in the portal, and let me just say. I'll I'll circle back and answer the question, but I just want to say this next portal opening right now has got to be one of the most eagerly anticipated ones in in the history of college football, because I'm telling you, college football coaches have no idea what to expect right now. They have absolutely no idea what to expect. It's kind of the wild, wild west. We're kind of going into the, 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 the un, you know it's like uh, like on Planet of the Apes when they when they walk past the thing and they walk past like the, the heads and they're going to the forbidden zone and they have no idea what's out there in the forbidden zone that's kind of where we're at on this we're in the forbidden zone of portal activity and nobody has an idea what's going to happen so it could be unbelievable and it could be you know, 600 guys go in or it could be you know a, a whimper but nobody knows and I think that's what's uh that's what's terrifying college football coaches all over the place right now is what in the heck is going to happen in this portal window? How bad is it going to be? And, um, I, you know, I'm you know, every day I'm kind of like got my ear to the ground trying to figure out how bad it's going to be. But to circle you know, back to the question, I think Ohio State's looking for a running back. They're looking for a running back. Could it be the UMass kid? Sure. Um, and for me, Peoples is the, is the guy. I mean, he's he's electric. He's dynamic. He's the future. Um, he's the guy you want to, you know, build around. Um, and I think he can do it. So uh, if, if it was me, it would, it would go, you know, Quinchon and Trey and then and then James Peoples and and uh, whoever's left after that can kind of pick up the scraps. Totally, totally agree. I appreciate you, Clay. Thanks for being on here every night. Buck Nasty, thank you for the 10. Does TC Caffey have a chance for some meaningful carries? What is the word on him in Nevada OH? I, oh, 
See, I love guys like TC because guys like TC earn their spots. He's a guy. Um, again, you know, if you want to read the tea leaves, like if they put you in front of the microphones for the media during spring, they've got a role for you. So TC is going to have a role this year. Um, it might be as a special teamer. It might be as a goal line guy. I don't know. But I think, uh, you know, will he be a humongous part of the offense? Probably not. But is he a guy, if someone gets dinged up in the middle of the season, which happens every year, uh, could they give him some snaps and, and not look like vomit? Yeah. So I think TC's got a shot to, uh, to do some meaningful work. And again, like, you know, you don't get put in front of the microphones unless you think you're going to, you have a shot to do something. So Nevada, your thoughts, TC McAfee or Caffey, uh, ha- does he have a chance to have some meaningful carries this year? Yeah, I think he nailed it. I, you know, you always look for those tells. It's like playing poker. You're looking for those tells. When Ohio State rolls you out, there's a reason for that. And we've seen it in, in recent years with, you know, Mitch Rossi, Xavier Johnson. I mean, we can go back to all the, the things of the guys that, you know, unheralded walk-on type of low re- recruited type of guys that come out and play, you know, and they have meaningful minutes. And, you know, that doesn't mean he's going to be the starter. That doesn't mean he's going to be, you know, the guy that's going to be the hero of the Michigan game. But will he have a role? Yeah. And th- when you see him, I mean, he, he's a strapped up dude. I mean, I mean, he's clearly uh, a guy that's uh, that enjoys working out uh, strong as an ox, just, you know, muscles on top of muscles. And um, I think Ohio State wants to use him in some I- interesting ways and in some goal line sets. And I, th- I think he'll he'll play more than an, an, an insignificant role for us at this year. I'd say the Mayan Williams role he'll step into comfortably. And, you know, Mayan did some nice things for Iowa State. You know, he wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't the end-all be-all, but you know, decent, solid player for us. And I think Caffey will be the same way. Strapped up big dude. He's kind of like you after you had a beef Wellington at noon in Vegas at Wolfgang Pucks. Strapped up, ready to go. They're just like, he's goal lineback, nose for the I'm end ready zone. To ready to I'm go. ready. Put me He's in, like, coach. He put me in, and let's find three on the bottom, 100 play poker, discipline to Ooh. walk away. That's that is okay. what we put. Like, you know, the, every every team's got their creed. Like, Ryan Day has tough love. Urban Meyer had, uh, um, you know, uh, God, he had about a thousand of them, but he had, uh, you know, finish, you know, you know uh, four to six A to B. You know, Nevada Bucks is three aces on the bottom, walk away. Yeah. Money in the Walk bank. Away. Go yeah, buy it. Take it. Go get a go get a second beef Wellington. Another vodka tonic. Totally agree. Let's go. Uh, Let's go. Benji, thank you for the twenty thoughts on Coach Locks opening presser. Nevada, I'll let you go first. I thought he killed it, but I expected him to kill it because this guy is a uh, he's a different cat. He's been coaching for like seven years. He's been a high school relations guy at Florida State and at Memphis and. You know, he was going to be a volunteer weight coach, you know, and in his bulletproof vest with his, you know, machine guns on his back, or whatever. And like, and now he's here. Now he's the running backs coach at Ohio State. So only in America, baby. But your thought on Coach Locke's opening at press conference? Yeah, it was impressive. I just, I, I just kept thinking when I'm watching him in the press conference of how impressive he's going to be in the living room of recruits. And, and, and how people would have a, a great sense of comfort. You know, when you're sending your kid away to school, you know, it's, it's terrifying. It's terrifying to do that. And you want what's best for them. You want them to be taken care of. You want them to be, you know, in, in, a, in a safe, nurturing environment. And um, I, I got to believe, you know, for running backs that he's going to send off those vibes of, hey, I'll take care of your son. I'll develop your son. I'll be tough with your son, but I'll be fair with your son. And I'll get your son where, where he wants to be, and, and he'll get what he deserves. And um, I think that's why he'll be such a great recruiter for Ohio State, and that's why he'll be such a great relationship builder. But, uh, yeah, he, he came across you know, very impressive, very authentic, kind of the anti-Tony Alford. And, um, yeah, I thought it was, a, it was definitely a, uh, a terrific show. And if you haven't seen it, go on YouTube, check it out. It's worth, worth a watch. Uh, very, very impressive guy. You did good. Jeremy Moreland, thank you for the 10. My man, we got to sell these. People are trying to kill me for this. This cup you made is absolute gas. And for summer, it's probably the greatest cup that's ever been invented. The greatest cup since the Stanley Cup. The Jeremy Moreland. 
Nevada Buck with the correct C, completely filled in logo, Buckeye Scoop. Jeremy, get with me. We're going to put a link on the site. We're going to sell about 5 million of these things because everybody wants my cup. It's my cup. So uh, the only thing is, is I need one that's like five times bigger because like, you know, I have to be able to fill my beer up with it and that's not enough beer for me. So, but I appreciate you, brother. You're the best. Uh, Jeremy Morland says, I can make the dang C, which is a C for Nevada Buck. Any way you want it. Laugh out loud, go box Nevada. OH. I O. Jeremy, you're the best. Hit me up, Buckeye Scoop, uh, at, or just do Barton.145 at Gmail. Hit me with an email. Let's sell some of these things, dude, because people want them. Dave Mathis, thank you for the five. Uh oh, Nevada. Uh oh, Nevada. This is a Nevada buck question. I'm going to ask it to you. You ready, Nevada? Are we happy? Are we happy? That we lost to the University of Michigan. It started the fire. Got us what we want, what we have now. If not, we might still have McCord and we don't make as many moves. Nevada OH. I O. Nevada, I think that that's, that's a real question. Now, again, I know that you think that I am Charles Woodson's son and I am Mr. Go Blue and I, I have my Bo Schembechler sheets and underwear that I sleep in every night. But that being said, I don't think we should ever be happy that we lost to Michigan, but it did kind of set off a chain of events that got us to the greatest offseason in school history. But I'd love your thoughts on that because this is a delicate one. This is diffusing a bomb. This is like speed when Keanu Reeves is on the bus with Sandra Bullock trying to diffuse the thing before it blows up. That's what this is. But I want you to diffuse this bomb. What are your thoughts? Because I don't know if us being happy that we lost to Michigan is the right verbiage, but how would you talk about it? Yeah, I, again, I want. There's a couple of different things at play here. One, Kirk Barton was the meanest sob that ever played at Ohio State, and two, Kirk is a big, soft, cuddly bear right now, and and I'm having a hard time reconciling those things because he's so soft on Michigan right now. It's almost it's kind of embarrassing. But having said that, I would say the Cotton Bowl was really more the. the I think the Cotton Bowl was the one that we needed to kind of soil ourselves on you know it, the cotton bowl was the worst offensive line performance by far maybe the worst offensive line performance that i've ever seen and it was the only game that that uh carson hinsman didn't start so that one that should tell you a little bit about about a carson hinsman but i think we needed to lose that one we needed to lose that one in kind of an embarrassing fashion for ryan to kind of figure out that the massive changes needed to be made um the Michigan one, man, I, I I know that that is definitely looking for the blessing, looking for the uh, silver lining and all the despair, but I just can't get there because I, I just hate Michigan so much. And I remember how bad I felt after we lost that game to Michigan. Um, even though I, I still felt that we had a lot in front of us, I still felt there was, there was a path to the playoff. I thought there was a path for us to, um, you know, to go in. And I, and I certainly felt the path forward for 2024, but it's a great question. And let me tell you what, it's the right worldview. Because I've said this to Kirk many, many times. I said, Kirk, whenever there's something bad that's happened, look for the blessing. Because it's just energy, man. It's When negative energy is around you, look for the positive energy. You have to find it because there's always a blessing in there as long as you look for it. And uh, I think I've proved prophetic on that whenever anything bad's happened. So, you know, maybe this was what it took for us to kind of get to this place. And uh, what I'll say is that that is a heck of a way to look at the world. And you've got to be a, uh, a very positive person and a very mentally healthy person to have an outlook like that. So I really, I really salute you, but you're probably a better person than I, because um, I hate Michigan so much. I can't, I can't conjure up that there was any good coming out of that game. So I'm kind of talking out of both sides of my mouth, but that's the best I got. Well, outside of Yoder and outside of, um, Ed Moransky, who I love to death, who's a Youngstown guy. He's from Lake Club. I belong to Ed Moransky, who is a Michigan right tackle, played for Bo Schimbler. I belong to his country club. He treats me like a son. He treats me better than pretty much anybody from Ohio State treats me. And outside of him and Yoder, I hate everybody ever associated with Michigan. And I golf to Charles Winston. He's not bad. But everyone else, like, screw them. I mean, I would, you know, sell them into, uh, into the Baton Death March if I had to. But... Um, that's the difference. I'm not happy we lost to Michigan. 
I'm happy about where we are now. I'm happy that we had the best offseason in school history, but you know, like we can't keep missing layups. I mean, Ryan's had three straight teams that were favored to beat Michigan and we lost every single time. So I, uh, you know, he had CJ Stroud, who's going to be a billion dollar quarterback in the NFL and we never beat Michigan. So, you know, again, like it's, it is what it is, but, um, they got to get back to being a tough outfit. And I think that that's something that Ryan is striving to do. Um, but, you know, he's got to get rid of some of the ratchets that are in his program that are uh, guys that are shells of their former stuff. Because there's some guys that have been the what he has for since 2012, and they're like kind of Willie Mays stumbling around at, in center field at the end of their careers. Like, that's what they are. Because they're not what they used to be. They don't work as hard as they used to. And part of that's on Ryan. But I also think that, you know, when you work for Urban and you have to actually work really hard every day, um, it's easy to kind of relax and coast. And that's where some of those guys are at this point. Uh, Al Jefferson, thank you for the five. Burke, what's the best way to get autographs at the game? What I need a primo seat. Is there a spot I can run into players before after the game? Well, I would, um, you know, the players' locker room is down at the far corner of uh, the stadium. Uh, the tunnel they run out of after the game, a lot of those guys, they walk out of there, they get on the bus. That's a good spot to grab them. Um, depends on who you're trying to get. Again, with NIL, I mean, autographs have never been easier to procure. Uh, but that, that's where I try. I don't think buying great seats is great because, you know, the players are, they're busy in the game. They got to go, uh, you know, they got to play the game. They got to be engaged in the game. They can't be like signing autographs during the game. So even if you get front row tickets, like I don't think players are going to be coming over there signing autographs during the game. Um, post game, you can get some. Uh, I think if you go to, uh, you know, some of the NIL stuff, it's real easy to get autographs. So depends on who you're trying to get. I'm sure everybody wants JJ. Everybody wants Julian saying, the future superstars, but that'd be my suggestion uh, outside the player's locker room is a good spot. Um, so yeah, there's my advice for that. Appreciate you. Al. Oh, can I, can, can I, can I make a comment? Right Cause you just mentioned JJ and that, that was a segue. Knowles just did an interview today where he said that JJ Smith is probably the best player on the field right now. And talk, can you can imagine Jim Knowles saying that about JJ Smith today? Like right now? Like right now, how crazy is that? I mean, like for for a defensive coach to say JJ Smith might be the best player on the field right now, that just shows you kind of the rare air. I mean, like, like they're trying to keep the hype train under control on JJ Smith, and uh, but Jim Knowles is a truth teller, and he comes out and, and, and drops that bomb on there. Um, the JJ Smith hype is real, guys. But so you can you can improve. We can't hype that kid enough, man. He's so good. Hey, I mean, you know. Um... Jim Knowles is a lot of helping and he's very technical and he's a big time technician on that defense. So I think he's going to do a great job and I'm just uh, happy he's doing what he's doing. Uh, Precinct. Thank you for the five. Kirk, were there any O-line in-game smack talkers during your time at OSU? Yes. Uh, if so, how about a story? Oh, freaking H, Nevada. I O. So TJ Downing, who was my best friend from my time at Ohio State, TJ was very ratchet. TJ um, was a good player. He was a year older than me. He went to Canton Glenico to Maslin Perry. He graduated in 02, and I graduated in 03. So he was there. Uh, he was part of Maurice Claret's class with Troy Smith and uh, AJ Hawk and all those guys. He got there a year before me. We both played tackle. Um, obviously, in Stark County, I played tight end. He played tackle. Um, I beat him out. Like, our my second year his third year when he's a retro sophomore me him and tim schaefer were competing for the right tackle job i beat him out uh after four games of the regular season i would have beat them both out except i was hurt all springs out of shoulder injury then i blew my ankle out uh so i missed all of spring balls so tim schaefer started i was his backup tj was kind of in never never land uh, i was kind of moving to guard and then um you know i started starting like week five and uh, TJ wasn't playing, even though I was a year younger than him. He was a year older than I was, and uh, you know, he, but he kept that he kept that Gatorade ice cold for me. So I appreciate TJ for being my backup, even though he was older than me and keeping that ice. He, I mean, he had the cold. It was the coldest Gatorade I've ever had in my life. It was great. So when I'd come off the off the field from playing, and he was standing there shooting sunflower seeds, uh, he always had that Gatorade ready to go. Had the towel ready for me to wipe the sweat off my brow. So I appreciate TJ for that, but. TJ talked a lot of trash. I never said, I don't think I said eight words my entire career outside of when we played San Diego state in Oh five, I got clipped 
um, on, a, on an interception return. And it was the most egregious, ridiculous clip of all time. A clip is a block in the back. Like someone blind says you from behind. And, you know, it, that that's a flag every time. Like any idiot. The first day of refereeing when we can call that. And I didn't get a flag. And I went ballistic because it, it, it was a cheap shot. Again, like, you know, I don't mind hard physical play. I don't mind guys doing stuff that's within the the, the, the realms of the rules. And I, I do the rule book like the back of my hand because I studied it. I took an, an officiating football class at Ohio State, which again, outside of my MBA courses where I got a finance uh, uh, degree for my MBA, I literally, like the, the officiating football course was the best course I ever took at Ohio State because I got to learn what do officials look at, what can get away with, uh, what's questionable. Um, every football player should take that class because again, if you really want to know how to get away with stuff and cheat and do that kind of thing in football. It's, it's like, it's like catnip for a guy like me. Who's a football aficionado. Um, TJ loved to talk trash. TJ, we played Iowa 06 up there. We were one in the country. They were like eight in the country or something like that night game. And there was this guy named Mitch King, Mitch King sucked, but he was like a try hard white guy D tackle. And, uh, TJ, we had a slide protection where it's like, you know, TJ, if this is TJ is my guard, I'm the right tackle. Like Mitch King was like the three technique right on TJ. That was the shoulder. And TJ is literally saying the most foul, nasty, ridiculous stuff you could ever imagine to Mitch to, to get him all ticked off. Nasty. I can't repeat it on this podcast. It's a family show. But whatever's the nastiest things you could imagine in your mind, that's what TJ was saying to Mitch King. So, of course, he's saying that because he knows it's a slide protection and he's leaving him and I have to block him. Now, Mitch King sucked and I was way stronger than he was. So I kind of treated him like the new guy in prison and I just kind of, you know, did my thing. But it was hilarious because Mitch was fighting me so hard. And I'm like, dude, I didn't even say that to you. Like, I don't say like a word. And then later in the game, I will give TJ Downing all the credit in the world. You guys can record this and, and play this for him when you guys see him in Canton when he's out at every bar in the universe. Mitch King cheap shot at me later in the Iowa game. And I was furious. And we were up by three touchdowns or whatever. And there was like five minutes to go in the game. So I didn't even say anything. So I pointed the scoreboard and I said some nasty stuff to him. And then the next play, TJ Downing, I swear to God, took him to the ground, you know, and then he punched him in the back of the head like 10 times. And it was completely amazing. Because I was like, you know, those are the kind of guys you need on your team to round out your locker room. Because again, I wasn't doing anything. Because like, look, I've already won. We're up by three scores. It's whatever. You're a douchebag. Whatever. TJ bullied this kid and hit him in the back of the head like eight times. And I've got, I saw the film. So it was like, I was like, that's amazing. That's the kind of guy TJ was. TJ was, TJ was a total dirt bag, but he was, he was a great right guard. Again, he was second team All-American which is awesome at Ohio state. The only thing better than being second team all American is being first team all American where you actually get a tree. And I make sure to remind TJ every single time that, Hey, I, I always look, I always go to Buckeye Grove and I look for that second team all American tree and I never see it. I always look for it. I don't know if they've got a set little garden over there with poinsettias or something, but you know, for the, for the first team all American tree, like I got a big old sturdy tree um, that they haven't poisoned yet. All the idiots in the Woody Hayes that don't like me, they haven't poisoned it, but TJ's tree is nowhere to be found. But hey, I said, you can always have one of my branches or maybe a little leaf off mine, but you don't get the whole tree when you're second team All-American. So, uh, but uh, TJ was an epic smack talker. Um, that was a great question, Precinct. I appreciate that. We got We got to get the video of that. If you got the video of that, you got to, you got to, we got to fire that up. I got, I got to upload it. Cause it's, it's, it's 06 Iowa, yeah. man. And I mean, I actually, I had it when I had uh, TJ on there. It was, uh, I mean, we actually, we broke that down. Like when he, when he was on the show, um back in the olden days so i'll see if i get him back on uh casey thanks for the 20 appreciate you how's Cedric houston doing why is uh the no contract between coaches and players during the summer is josh pate credible this is a deep one he talked about how crazy the portal will be and some else will be decimated sound true nevada i'll let you talk on that because i took the last one what part do you want me to? What part do you want me to? You can okay. That? So start start with okay. So I'll read the whole thing so you can compute your answers as I'm saying this. How is Edric, <laughs> how how is Edric, how is Edric Houston doing? Okay, stop that one right there. Edric Houston is doing great. Edric Houston is going to be a beast. If JJ Smith wasn't from Krypton, 
we'd be talking about Edward Houston all every podcast. We'd be talking about how, how good Edward Houston's doing, how Edward Houston's going to be in the rotation, how Edward Houston's going to be a monster, how Edward Houston's going to be a first round pick in the NFL draft someday. Um, but we have you know, the, the the son of of what a Zeus um, at wide receiver. So we talk a lot about J.J. Smith, but no, Edric Houston has lived up to every bit of the hype and it's been terrific and uh, is going to be a great player here at Ohio State. Next Part two, question. Nevada. Next question. Why is there no contact between coaches and players during the summer? Well, I mean, there's lots of, you're talking about like the league, the, the NCAA reasons for that. I mean, I, I, I mean, I've got I've got theories as that you want theories behind this. What would be your thought as to why that that happens there, Mr. Barton? What what you lived it as a coach as a player? Um, is it they they just they want to? Is it more of a they're trying to give the coaches a break or they're trying to give the players a break? Which because I, I could go either way on that one. I just think with abuse comes control, and yeah. I'm sure there's some coaches somewhere that are going to take it too far. And it, you know, it's a lot like Ohio seven on seven where, you know, Ohio just, you know, passed seven on seven football. And I think that, you know, the, the two biggest reasons it didn't pass for, you know, the last 40 years has been going on everywhere else is that they're scared that big time programs like Maslin and those types of schools are going to have seven on seven teams year round. And they're gonna have all their placing and seven on seven football. So it's like, they basically get like free practices. Um, and I think, uh, you know, in the summer, there's programs, especially, pro again, you have to remember, not every program is like Ohio State, Ryan Day, 10-year extension or whatever. He's got, like, people, are, some of these kids are trying to save their jobs. They don't want their wives to have to leave their bingo club and their daughters to have to leave their middle school and stuff. So if they say, hey, you can, you know, go coach these kids in the, in the summer, like, people are going to go way over the line. It's going to be crazy. So... I think that's going to be um, that's the biggest issue uh, as to why they don't have they 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 they, uh, they shorten that because again like the coaches cheat and they want to they want to control the players this is kind of how it goes so I think that that's the uh, the biggest re reason why they do that uh, Nevada is Josh Pate credible I don't even know who that is but I assume not uh, yeah I think he's credible. I mean, he's okay. certainly credible when it comes when it comes to the portal stuff. I mean, I, but I think that's kind of like common knowledge. Everybody kind of knows that that's what's kind of coming. I think he's saying that the port, the second portal thing, is going to be nuts. I think everybody's kind of there, but um, I think on that one, you know, he's as credible as the next guy for sure. Yeah, I uh, I agree. I, I think that um, we'll see. Uh, he and Josh Pay talked about how crazy the portal will be. And sub rosters will be decimated. Is that not true? Again, that's like saying that the Masters is going to be fun. The Super Bowl is going to be expensive. Uh, the Saturday Buckeye Scoop event will have more than two people there. Like, that's like a no-brainer, obviously. Um, but your thoughts on that, Nevada? He talked about how crazy the portal will be. Uh, and some of the rosters will be decimated. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that's the concern. I, you know, we talked about earlier in the show. I think it's the great unknown of what's going to happen. But I, I do think it's a little bit of a captain obvious move there. But um, I think there there are some coaches that are really concerned that you know at Ohio State we're talking about you know which depth players, which guys that are buried on the depth chart are, are going to move on. But there's some schools that are worried about like, could I lose ten starters? You know, could I lose you know big time guys and. Um, I'm not sure anybody knows exactly what that's going to look like. And I think that's what's so scary to people is, you know, you, you know, we joke about the, the, you know, Miami heat super team type of setup with you know, LeBron and Bosch and Wade, but you know, could that be that, that case? And it's not just LeBron, Bosch and Wade. It's, you know, five other guys that joined the team at the same time. That's what you could have in college football. Now we like it because we're, we're the Miami heat this time, but, um, it's scary, and I'm not sure what college is going to look like. And I'm not. I I hope it's not as bad as people are 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 worried about. But I know there's some teams. I think the Arkansas coach is talking about it in terms of saying, you know, he's worried about like losing half his starters in this in this portal window. And uh, if that were to happen to a big time program, um, I'm I'm really not sure what they do about it. But I I, I know it would get people's attention. That's for sure. Well, and that's. 
That is the, uh, that's the new world. It's, uh, it's crazy, but I, I love it. Ohio State's killing it. Uh, oh my God, Denny, uh, Dirk Larton, which I've never heard that one before, but that's great. Dirk, how would Dirk, you evaluate, Dirk, how would you evaluate Dirk, our quarterbacks? Well, well Dirk Larton. Yeah, yeah. I've never heard that one. That's good. That's, well, Julian like Sands, is, Julian Sands, a superstar. Um, obviously he's going to be the future next year. He'll be the starter. I think Will Howard's the guy this year. Will wasn't great today. Uh, from what I was told, Devin Brown is competing with Will. They were kind of the same today. Not great. Not really grabbing the brass ring. I think Lincoln is potentially out the door. I think Aaron Nolan is in Never Neverland. Uh, that's how I evaluate it. Again, with Julian Sane being the shooting star right now, it's, you know, I mean, it's hard to not bet on anything other than that. Again, we, we were talking about Julian six weeks ago, seven weeks ago, and Buckeyes group to come before Super Bowl even kicked off uh, about how much he'd impress people in the Woody Hayes with his – with his throwing, his natural throwing ability, his accuracy. Uh, he's like CJ Stroud, except he's much smarter than CJ. Um, so, you know, I think that that's, uh, it's just one of those things. I think that, uh, you know, sometimes when, you know, Aaron Nolan um, had some miscues when he first got here, and uh, I don't think that the staff was necessarily open to going after Julian saying, but when Air screwed the pooch a few times, they said, well, Julian wants to come here, and well, let's go get the next Aaron Rodgers. And he showed up, and he's shredded. He's killed the game. He shredded everybody around him. So, you know, again, I I don't know. Like, I mean, uh, people lie, numbers don't. And Saturday's going to be huge because the whole world's going to get to see these guys, and we'll see who can shine under the bright lights because I think Aaron's going to get some reps. I think Lincoln, you know, if he's still here, will get some reps. I think, obviously, Julian's going to get reps. And you're going to see Will and Devin, you know, because Dev, Devin hasn't done anything, and Devin – not being not denigrating him, but he hasn't. He's played you know one game and in, in space, and he's gotten hurt both times. So we'll see what he's got to go. Because um, again, these guys not only are auditioning to be the, the starting quarterback at high state, but they're auditioning to be a starting quarterback somewhere. So there's a lot at stake for these quarterbacks. Um, Nevada, your thoughts? How would you evaluate the quarterbacks thus far? Well, what I evaluate is that Julian Sand lost his stripe faster than any you know freshman quarterback that i've ever seen i mean and has there been ones quicker if there has i can't remember it um and you know we knew when he came in when, when he came in i thought he would be good based upon what i'd seen when i started hearing the early returns from house that you know it's gonna you know he's the chosen one you know he's gonna be great it's just a question of when he's gonna kind of ascend to the throne and when he's gonna get his shot um which they're going to play him this year. It's just a question of how much. And um, I think, you know, Will Howard, I think Will Howard's the guy. Um, I've, I've, I've got a bet with one of our good posters that Will Howard takes the first snap. We'll, we'll see. Uh, we've got a little friendly pay it forward wager on that. Um, but, you know, Devin's going to be in there compete. Devin, Devin's not going to quit. Devin's going to be in there competing to the end. And, uh, and like you said, Julian's a robot. I mean, Julian, the only knock on him is he's not huge. He's not, he's not a big guy, but he's got a big arm. And he's got a big brain and he moves around a lot and uh smart, smart, smart kid processes really, really fast. And that's why they took the stripe off as quick as they did, which, you know, again, that's when you always know that stuff never lie. You know, that's that black stripe stuff people look at and they're like, oh, it's kind of silly. It's kind of sometimes you can tell. And on this one, when they took it off as quick as they did, I'm saying, you know, he's the real deal. So uh that's that spoke volumes to me. Yeah, I uh I absolutely and totally agree on that. Uh, Pooh Beer 12, thank you for the five. And we've got a Thrones analogy coming. Uh, thanks for being an Ultra member. Uh, appreciate you, my man, as always, being on here, bringing the heat every night. And sorry, Kirk, but your analogy was way off. We're the mountain. And Alfred is Oberlin Martel. Ooh. He'll try to poison us, but this is going to get messy in November. Nevada OH. I O. That was one of the more shocking scenes in Game of Thrones, and I love Game of Thrones, but uh, Oberlin Martell, who's also the dude from Narcos, getting you know his head s smashed by uh, uh, by Hackthor Bjornsson was hilarious. But hey, that's why you better uh, you better uh, if you're gonna kill somebody, make sure you kill him. You know, don't don't celebrate. And he's laying there and he's ready to rock. Donald and Ken Rossback, thanks for skip off for everything for the five. So nice to hear Coach Day talk about rotating players this year during his presser in Nevada OH. I-O. 
Nevada, do you think he will actually rotate players? I do really believe that. And the fact that he's talking about it openly in, in press, he's learned. He's learned. Chip Kelly's had a big influence on him on this. Uh, he's done a lot of self scout and he's done a lot of reflection as to things that he did well and things that he wanted to change. He identified this early, early on that this was something that he needed to change, that he was going to change. And he continues to talk about it into into the spring and into the spring ball. So I, I, I do believe him. I really do believe him. And I, and I think it's going to be for the best for the uh, 2024 Buckeyes and beyond. Totally, totally agree. Jim Duchelle, thanks for the deuce. As a formerly old OT who never buys anyone a beer, um, I don't know what that means, but I do know that we are going to Augusta with you next year. So, Jim, do not renege on that because we're ready to rock, man. We are flying down there, and we're going to be styling and profiling and eating like 7,000 pimento cheese sandwiches, but... Super excited about it, my man. It's going to be a blast. I appreciate you so much. Um, yeah, and I'll see you on Saturday. Uh, you got to see you at the head table, my dude. Uh, Nevada, Jim extended probably the greatest offer of my lifetime. Uh, any thoughts on that? I, I think that uh, he deserves a place <laughs> of honor at your at your table on Saturday. And uh, and if, if he wears the uh, scoop hat gear, that he should get a free beer. And yeah. Um, that that offers extended not only him, but to everybody that comes to beat ups on Saturday morning. Get there early, get there often. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be one of those days that we talked about for years to come, and you're going to want to say, "I was there when it was there, and I was in the building, not outside with the fire marshal." So get there Correct. early and get a seat. And Jim, uh, thank you for the deuce. You did not read anything here, but I'm going to assume. Um, that was to mention uh, Phil Mickelson's illegitimate kid that is in Hilliard, uh, but I'm just Alleged, assuming alle that. Alle 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 allegedly. That you never heckle him about, but Jim, uh, you're a rare bird. I appreciate you, my man. You're the best. Back a man. Thank you for the five. When we talk about the that team of North running back coach, from here on out, we should only refer to him as Tony Hourford. Hourford? Like yeah, remember our, the hour thing? What's the hour thing? Remember in our Oh, mind, you're or... right. Yes, from the DM. From the DM, this, yeah. He's got the fat That's... sausage, fat, like, pork fingers. And he's just like, ooh. Blah, blah, blah. Either it's that like... or, 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 he just, or he just can't spell. He can't spell. You're going to send yeah. some little diss DM in five words, Can... and one of the words is misspelled. But uh, Jesus yeah, Christ, Alford. I know. I, I like I like Alford. That's awesome. Tony Fat Pudding Pop. Well, hey, I mean, I don't know. If you locked him and Carlos Lachlan in a room, man, I know one guy's coming out and... The other guy's going to be laying there like a, a pile of bone and ooze, like Lil Wayne said. Uh, Dev, what's up, baby? My man, Ohio 7715. Thank you for being a skip-off for everything, for being a wrench brother. Got another wrench brother coming back, which is the rumor. Best chat in the land. Appreciate you, Kirk in Nevada, bringing the heat in each and every night. Shout out to the family in the chat, the wrench brothers. We'll be first to be back Sunday. Tora, get pumped. Uh, 2024, 2025, Natty Lock, Nevada OH. I O. Yeah, we're going to be uh, back killing the game. I cannot wait for it. Michael, thank you for the deuce. If you have a question, please toss that in the chat. Uh, apologize if you did not get that in. Uh, and also, thank you for the deuce. Steve Jack 8, thank you for the 10. Late to the show tonight. Hearing Howard really struggled today. I heard that as well. Almost one reception. Sain is steady. Brown was the only one to score only. Uh, how much pressure does Day have to start him Due to his NIL package, Nevada OH. I O. I think there's some pressure to start Will Howard just because of, you know, he did get a bunch of money. Um, I think that that's something that kind of hangs over everybody's heads. Like if you, it's so different than an NFL team where the owner pays a player a bunch of money. And if you're the coach, you better figure out how to get that cornerback up to speed on what you want to do uh, if they pay him a bunch of money. Nevada, your thoughts. How much pressure does Ryan Day have to start Will Howard? Do do the NIL package. Well, I I look at it differently. I, I look at it as, you know, Ryan Day watched Devin Brown play all last year with Kyle McCord. Um, Kyle McCord came at the end of the year, asked for some assurances. Ryan wouldn't give it to him. Uh, Devin Brown's still there. And Ryan went out and got Will Howard. So that just should tell you all that you need to know about what Ryan thinks about Will Howard. 
So I, I think it'll, it's probably more about he's trusting his own instincts and his evaluations as opposed to the NIL stuff. But NIL definitely puts a, um, you know, I've always wondered about, you know, you know if, if you're NIL donor person and Ohio State comes to you and says, look, we need $2 million to get this guy. We, we got to get him. We have to do it. And you're like, oh, okay, I'll do it. Here's my $2 million. And then he's not playing. You know, when is donor guy going to come into the Ohio State and say, hey, I put up my $2 million and you're, you're not playing my guy? What's up? And do I think those conversations are going to happen? I think it's inevitable. Um, will it happen at Ohio State? I hope not. But um, they'll happen somewhere. Um, so we'll, with Will Howard, um, you know, yeah, I heard he didn't have a good practice today. But, you know, small sample size, large sample size. Will's been great. And um, I, I think you don't get too caught up on one practice or one thing. Let's just take a step back and see. And, and look, if Devin beats them out, if, if after all this, Devin Brown or Julian Sane beats out those guys and does it, Hey, you just tip your hat to him and, and let's go win some football games in 2024. But um, I, I think we'll, uh, I think we'll, we'll, we'll get it together. And, you know, Will doesn't need to be great. With his running, all Will needs to do is put the ball in some good spots, hand it off, and get out of the way and watch this team cook because uh, Chip's going to put him in some, uh, some really good spots. And that's a really good Ohio State defense he's going against. So him struggling, maybe that just means our defense was great today. And that's, that's never the worst thing. I, Completely and totally agree. Uh, Yakov, thanks. Uh, the Yakov 22, thanks for the deuce. Santa Silver built to Joe Montana. Just saying, I agree. I mean, if you're good enough, you can sling it. And uh, you don't have to be Ben Roethlisberger or Gargantuan to be a great NFL quarterback. Um, we live in the era of smaller, faster, quicker uh, quarterbacks. But if you throw that ball fast, you're not going to get hit and you're going to be straight. So totally agree with that. Sean Rollins, uh, thank you for the five. Thank you for being the king of Wooster. And also, thank you for being an ultra member. Reminder that the defense is no joke. No matter what quarterback is getting the most reps, Nevada, your thoughts on that? Uh, again, I don't think the quarterback has to do as much this year because I think our defense is going to be suffocating. But what are your thoughts? I don't think our defense will give up more than 21 points in a game this year. I'm going to say that right now. I'm going to lay that out. I know that's going to sound crazy. People are going to be like, oh, Nevada. I'm just telling you, that's how good this this defense is going to be absolutely stifling. Um, and so, yeah, just, yeah, you, you don't you don't need to win the game. Just don't lose it. Uh, it's like what, what I tell my goalies in hockey all the time. You know, you don't, you don't need to steal the game. Just don't, don't give up any softies. Don't lose the game for your team. Say the same thing to the quarterback. Just be smart. Put the ball in good spots. Get us some first downs. Move the chains. And uh, and Will Howard can do that. And uh, but look, all the quarterbacks can do it. All you know, Julian can do it. Devin can do it. Uh, Will can certainly do it. And and may the best man win. I totally agree. I think it's going to be uh, amazing. I'm excited to see what these guys can do with a superior defense behind them. Let's see, Alvarez looking for the five. There's such a good Seth Lemon. How can Harbaugh claim plausible deniability? Well. That whole staff is gone, except for maybe one guy. Uh, I think they have one guy back. Um, Sharon's like it. Uh, the tight ends coach moved to O-line, so there might be two guys. Um, so I don't I don't think that there is staff alignment between last year and this year. It's a whole new staff. Uh, Nevada, in your opinion, uh, Jose asks, if there is such a good staff alignment, how can Harbaugh claim plausible deniability? I don't think he can, uh, but your thoughts on that? Well, one in the eyes of the NCAA, it's irrelevant. You know, you know, it, it, the the whole idea they they did away with the idea of what the head coach knew or when he knew it or if he knew it. Uh, you are responsible for the entire program. Everything that happens there, you are one hundred percent responsible for it, whether you knew it, whether you were involved, or whether you had absolutely no knowledge. So, um, yeah, it does seem kind of a specious argument that, that you're going to try to make where you're like. Hey, we're so well aligned. Oh, we're so together. But hey, I didn't know what these guys were doing. None of it makes any sense with the Michigan. I mean, the whole, you know, Connor Stallions was a rogue agent, an insignificant backroom staffer that just happened to have the ear of the offensive and defensive coordinators during game days, sitting right on their shoulders, screaming at them, um, you know, getting the, the entire sideline involved in, in gymnastics, pointing to the sky none of it makes any sense, but it's, it's, it's the old Michigan excuses. So it, it doesn't have to make us, it's just stupid. 
Totally, totally agree. And I want to give a quick shout out to John Marks, my boy, 70 Duster John on BuckeyeScape.com. Uh, 17 years in the army, 10 years as a cop, uh, wow. watches every single night. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you for tuning in each and every night. I appreciate you. Ohio Refugee, thank you for the five. Thank you for being a scoop ultra member. Ivy Coach Locke is a foot to the behind this team needed, and it will be contagious. Perfect counterpart to James Laurenitis, which we got. I think you might have nailed it. No, there's an AI in there, so you're close to nailing Laurenitis. Uh, Nevada, OH. I, oh. I agree. I think Coach Locke's going to be a breath of fresh air. He's much tougher than Tony Alford. I think he's smarter. I think he's better. Um, I think he's going to do work. I think that the guys are going to respond to him. Again, Coach John Jenkins is from Pike Road, Alabama. Um, you know, uh, Carlos is from uh, Montgomery. So I think they're going to be uh, freaking frack. I think it's going to be great for what we're doing. I think kids uh, and their moms are going to love him because he's he's uh, he's lived a lot of lives. He's been a correctional officer. He's been through a lot. He's very conservative. He's a tough guy. He's not... He doesn't want any uh, soft batch cookies. So I think that moms will eat that up. And I think that it'll be happy to send their kids to Coach Locke uh, for them to get molded into men from him. Uh, Devin, Ohio 7715. Thank you for the 10. Uh, you throw a massive. I appreciate you, my man. Thank you for being a scoop ultra member. Thank you for being one of the Wrench brothers. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, if you have a question, toss it in there. Travis Hall. Thank you for the news. Looking forward to Saturday, Nevada OH. I O. Saturday's about to be wild. So I'm telling you guys, get there early because I've got RSVPs out the wazoo between our website, text messages, emails. Like, there's going to be a lot of people coming to this thing. So get there early. A lot of surprise guests coming. I think it's going to be fantastic. And uh, you guys are going to love it. Nevada, let's wrap this thing up. Any final thoughts as we talk about. Uh, Ohio State, a couple of spring practices left, two left, and uh, including the the, uh, the spring game. Your final thoughts? I, I just I think, and I'm not going to try to you know be prone to hyperbole or anything, but I think Saturday could be the greatest day in the history of days. And if you have a chance to come down for the spring game, go to Buffalo Wild Wings. And if you don't have tickets to the spring game, and you're like, you know, I really don't want to go to the spring game, go to Buffalo Wild Wings. Hang out with Burke Carton. Watch the Masters, hang out, have a smash burger, wear your gear, get a free beer. It's going to be a epic, epic time. I'm so jealous that I'm not going to be there for that. But Kurt's going to be live streaming to me from the thing. Like, he'll sporadically hold up his phone, and it'll be like I'm there. And um, it's going to be unbelievable. So if you have a chance and you're in the greater area or you're just within driving distance of like Columbus, get in the car, drive out there. Spend some time with uh, with Kirk and uh, with all the cast and and uh, have a great time. Like I said, I'm jealous. I wish I could be there. And uh, thank you guys for listening. Well, you won't be there, but your tab will be there because everybody that wears the gear, Nevada Buck is buying a beer. So I cannot wait for that. That'll be the probably the highlight of my life. And we're going to get to watch. Again, I don't even want to go to the spring game because I want to watch it and watch Saturday of the Masters at the same time. And then we've got UFC 300. It might literally be the greatest day in the history of humanity. I'm very excited. Yeah, I agree. About it. I, I agree. I agree. Greatest day. I mean, greatest day ever. I mean, what, what's better than watching Ohio State football and the Masters on the same day? Nothing, right? Well, and have and having a bacon cheese smash burger. Like, come on, oh, oh, dude, let's go, let's go. I'm telling you, it's gonna be awesome. Appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so much for kicking with us tonight. As always, uh, again, thank you. Uh, if you guys are coming Saturday, corner of Lane and High Street. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be lit. It's going to be um, one of the greatest days in the history of the scoop. Let me throw the flyer up. Our girl, Andy Joe Taylor, is going to sing us a couple of great songs. I'm excited about that. So the spring game meetup is 2151 at North High Street, Columbus, Ohio, 43201. Corner of Lane and High Street. It's less than a mile from the horseshoe. So if you guys are ready to rock and have a great time, show up. It'll be a blast. Um, I uh I got my boy Jeremy on here again. We hitting Hyde Park Saturday night. What's your thoughts on the Ryan Day ribeye brother? Um, you know, honestly, I always get the Kirk Herb Street because I always get the Kirk Herb Street steak, steak Herb Street, whatever it is. Because, and again, my wife hits me 
very hard with her purse. Every time I say this, I would say, can I get Sick Herb Street? And the little, wait, little maitre d' is like, oh, yes, Sick Herb Street. And then I always ask, does it come with Aaron Andrews on the side? And then it, my wife just slugs me across the head. But hey, you know, the truth hurts. And uh, that's why there's only one real Kirk around Ohio State. But I'm just saying, I uh, appreciate you guys as always. I hope you guys are having uh, a great night. Again, this is going to be an awesome event. I'm excited about it. Uh, Jeremy, I would get the steak Urban Meyer um, because it beats Michigan and it's won a national championship. So it's just my opinion. It probably tastes a little bit better uh, than the current streak that we are on. Um, as always, appreciate you guys tuning in. If you guys enjoy this content, please leave us a like. Click subscribe. Also click that little alert bell. Those are all huge uh, for growing this channel. And this was a huge episode because you guys made it one. So thank you guys for kicking with us as always. It was a pleasure being here. And we had an absolute blast as always. Because uh, again, we love kicking with you guys each and every night. Um, shout out who you guys are watching the show with. And shout out where you guys are watching from. Again, put those in the comments. And uh, RSVP, just do it for fun. Do it again. Put it in the comments. Are you guys showing up? Saturday's about to be crazy. I think it's going to be a blast. I'm really excited to see a lot of you guys. Uh, I think you guys are going to have a really good time. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff in store, and we're excited to see you guys. So, as always, thank you so much, Buckeye Nation, and thank you, Scoop Family. I'm going to talk to you guys tomorrow, 7 p.m. Go Bucks. <laughs>